Hey, it's Josh with Cultural Catholic coming at you with the newest uh, episode of my religion mini series. Uh, today we are into the Dharmic religions, uh, and we will be starting with Hinduism. And quick note: if I get anything wrong or miss anything important, uh, please do not hesitate to put it down in the comments below. Additionally, please be civil. Um, flame wars are not fun. Anyway, so Hinduism. Uh, Hinduism is considered and probably is the world's oldest living religion, meaning it's been around the longest and it's still more or less been the same thing for that amount of time. Um, its origins are believed to stem uh, all the way back to the Indus River Valley civilization. Um, this is largely from images such as a man sitting between a tiger and a bull uh, that are believed to be related to modern Hindu deities. However, this link is largely unknown as the civilization suddenly ended 3,500 years ago and we still can't decipher um, their language. Uh, the next step towards Hinduism came from the Indo-European Aryans that invaded at the end of the Indus River Valley civilization uh, with the introduction of the Vedic religion. Uh, this uh, was very much a sacrificial religion which was meant to keep the world from falling apart with several different gods. Uh, chiefest among them, since there was no like chief god, uh, was uh, were Agni, the fire god who was associated as the messenger between heaven and earth, uh, and Indra, the god of war. Uh, this is also where the caste system is believed to have started. Uh, the first instance of what we could recognize as Hinduism is called philosophical Hinduism that came uh, after uh, actually started in the late part in the right like right at that uh, period between where uh, BCE turned into CE um, uh, uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, this is where the idea of reincarnation or samsara and moksha uh, or liberation appear um, uh, this is also where karma becomes the central glue that keeps the world together. Um, most important, the concepts of Atman and Brahman, the self and divinity, respectively, uh, became part of Hindu theology, such as it is. Um, uh, we will get into that a little bit later. Um, another step that looks distinctly Hindu is devotional Hinduism. Uh, this brought back the importance of uh, gods in the daily practice of Hinduism, as well as brought moksha to the population as a whole, which we'll also get into in a little bit. Um, the final step was modern Hinduism, uh, and this was an attempt to bring Hinduism into Congress with Islam and Christianity. Um, this meant viewing Hinduism as part of one great religion that included these two monotheistic religions. Uh, now, this is important because it was uh, pretty much a reaction to being ruled by the uh, Muslim Mughals and the Christian Brits uh, from the 16th century all the way up to the mid-20th century. Um, now some important doctrines and documents. Uh, the origins uh, is a long, of Hinduism is a long history of change upon change. Uh, because of all the changes that Hinduism saw over the several thousand years uh, meant that this world religion got really good at absorbing different beliefs and making it part of the religion as a whole. To that end, um, uh, uh, that means that it's ha kind of hard to pin down central doctrine. However, we can pin down a few things that are to one extent or another still fairly important. These are moksha and samsara, along with a few other ideas associated with it. Um, uh, uh, samsara is the process of birth, death, and reincarnation. Um, associated with this is the caste system. Uh, the idea is that if one fulfills their dharma or duty in their caste, uh, they move up, uh, they can move up the caste system through improved karma or uh, merit and de uh, merit as opposed to demerit. Um, uh, while the caste system is uh, to varying degrees still followed, it's not really as important to samsara as it once was. Uh, this was all to achieve moksha, going through the caste system, doing your dharma. Uh, this is the realization that we are Atman and Brahman and are finally re released from samsara. Basically, we are all one entity and the idea that there are like there's a me and there's another person over there is an illusion. Um, 
Um, uh, uh, adding to the adaptive nature of Hinduism is the breadth of texts that are considered sacred. Uh, the oldest are the Vedas, which is where we get Vedic religion. Um, these were texts that were used as guides to complete uh, the rituals of Vedic religion. Uh, they, these came from the with the Aryans and were written in Sanskrit, which is an Indo-European language. Uh, along with the uh, these, along with the Brahmanas and Aranyakas, uh, and please uh, forgive me for my pronunciation, uh, and the Upanishads. Uh, are these are all considered shruti or uh, sacred or divine texts. Um, now a little bit of difference. Uh, the Upanishads are a philosophical text and were uh, finished being composed around 300 BCE. The Vedas were done around 1200 BCE, uh, and the oldest Veda is around is from around 1200 BCE, and it was done being composed before then. Um, the other two Sruti texts are a combination of manual on how to perform rituals and philosophy. Uh, and the two most recent religious texts that are uh, important are the Mahabharata Bra Bra and the Ramayana. Uh, these are both stories, and in devotional Hinduism, stories are very important. Uh, with the Mahabharata uh, focusing on duty and dharma, and the Ramayana focusing on personal ethics. Um, now today, uh, uh, most Hindus fall into one of two sects, shall we, shall we say, philosophical and devotional. Uh, these, as stated before, are part of the origins of Hinduism. Um, philosophical is very much a personal religion with each individual working towards moksha on their own. Historically, this was largely done by wealthier individuals and in the historical context, this would be the Brahmins, or priests, and the Kshatriya, or warriors and nobles. Um, this was because they had the resources to become ascetics, um, which is kind of like being a beggar or uh, someone who just sits and only cares about enlightenment and trying to achieve it. Uh, with severe asceticism, it was, this was largely made unpopular among the general population because it kind of is abstained from sex and things of that nature. Uh, additionally, this form of Hinduism is atheistic, meaning they don't really believe in a god uh, as a, a means towards moksha. Um, they still do recognize that there are gods, they just that they aren't important to gaining enlightenment. Um, uh, uh, with And today there's only a few million still practicing this form of Hinduism. A devotional, on the other hand, um, is far more popular. This form of Hinduism focuses on worship of a particular god. By worshiping this uh, devotionally, the idea is that by their grace, the petitioner will achieve moksha and not have to go from caste to caste to ultimately achieve moksha. Um, and some of the most popular gods that are, devote, that are uh, uh, worshipped are Vishnu and his avatars. Uh, Shiva, Ganesha, uh, the elephant-headed god, um, who if you watch Sensei, you are kind of familiar with, and Mahadeva, uh, Devi. Um, now today, Hinduism is the third largest religion, major re world religion, at about 900 million. The vast majority live in India, um, with about four out of five Indians being Hindu. Additionally, Hinduism is the majority religion in Nepal, with millions being found Additionally, in Bangladesh, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Malaysia, and the U.S., as well as several other nations. Uh, in the West, Hindus have found great success in many professional fields. And in India, um, they are largely the leaders of the world's largest democracy. However, while most Hindus are open to other ideas, which is kind of how Hinduism became this kind of mishmash of stuff, um, some are fundamentalist. Uh, and this has led to several political parties that attach Indian nationalism with Hinduism. Um, a good example of that would be Narendra Modi to an extent in his party. Um, but yeah, that is uh, Hinduism. Uh, next week we'll go into Buddhism, and then after that we'll move into Chinese traditional religions, uh, Yoruba, and then... Uh, Finally ending with atheism. Uh, this is Joshua with Cultural Catholic signing off.